it's our first time back in China uh, for five years. The, the, the big story that's sort of dominating the Chinese Grand Prix at the moment is the fact it's a sprint race. And brilliant. I think we, we, we all agree that we maybe like like a sprint race of a weekend. It, it spices things up. It gives us something different to, to talk about. And we've obviously only got six this year. The, the issue that maybe the drivers are having with putting Shanghai as a sprint race is that we haven't been there for, for, for five years. And therefore, going onto a track without that with limited running remember you'll only get fp1 as your practice session before going into qualifying for the sprint look i've got two drivers here so this is a perfect forum to debate this martin i'll start with you if you only had one practice session before going on a track you hadn't been on for five years how would how would you feel um they've got the simulators they uh, many of them know the track well it's a track that's generated some great racing in the past um and we do often see on a weekend with red flags with weather uh, a driver might have uh, an engine or gearbox problem and misses a complete session or throws it in the edge or something like that, and they just have to pick themselves up and, and get on with it. So, I, I don't, honestly, I don't, I don't think it's a problem. They know, they know their way around there. The, the simulators are clearly pretty damn good and pretty realistic, um, and they will all have been working hard on those. Um, so they'll turn up pretty well prepared. The cars won't be a million miles off on setter. Um, and that that's true. It'll be, it'll be, it'll be, I don't, honestly, I don't. <laughs> it, it's a, it's an extra challenge, but I don't see it as a factor personally. Mm. I guess for us fans, Karun, it creates so much uncertainty, doesn't it? Because they won't have all this data. They won't be able to predict and do the race strategies in the way that they might do on a normal race weekend. It creates jeopardy and a bit of uncertainty. Oh, if I was a driver or a team member, I'd hate it, and I have all kinds of blame they they do, but. Um, now on, on the side of the fence that we are now, I think it's great. You know, we want, we want them going into the unknown. We want them to go into that Friday evening qualifying for the sprint, not knowing 100% of the setup is right. And guess what? With the change of the, the format from last year to this year, um, in terms of the, the order of the sessions, it means that they'll have the opportunity to change the car and change the setup. So you get two bites of the cherry, you know, and, and actually they don't just go into park Fermi after FP1, which is an important change. So uh, I, th I think it's fine. I think it'll be a, it's going to be a fun weekend to watch. And um, we get good racing there because you get, you get quite big. Um, it, it's a very different track. It's a front left limited track. The front left tire takes a bigger beating around there than anywhere else on the calendar. So actually, um, in terms of trying to get the setup right and managing the, that balance of the tire, it is a very tough track to get the car right. Um, and I think that will be interesting to watch. I mean, a balancing point is Oli Behrman, his, his second part of his race in, after the pit stop in Jeddah was on a hard compound tyre he'd never driven on in his life. And he was outstanding on it, you know, because they only get two sets a weekend. And uh, it was, you know, he, he managed it. He worked out what he got underneath him dialed in and got on with it and um, was outstanding. And, you know, this is a kid who got dropped in on a Saturday morning. So I, 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 I think, you know, the weather conditions there can be challenging. And I love that long back straight. And uh, there's a good series of corners which teed him up nicely as well. So uh, I, I'm pleased to see Formula 1 back there. Mm. And it's been resurfaced. Karina, I wonder if there will be perhaps flashbacks to Istanbul in 2020 when obviously we went to a brand new resurfaced track and it was very very slippery I don't know if you have any intel on the track or you or what what would be your expectations of of how the cars are going to go around that around the circuit I think that may well be the case um you know it, the track was sort of built on a swamp land wasn't it so you 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 started to get these massive bumps um you know the run up to turn one for example you get that massive bump just as the drivers would turn in so it was due a resurface, um, and, and I'm glad they've taken the opportunity to do so. It'll just throw another curveball because they'll have, as Martin said, they'll have all their simulation numbers. And, and what happens is Pirelli send engineers out where they have um, a machine that basically measures the, the roughness of the surface. And they'll feed that information back to the teams. They'll plug that information back to the simulators and all of that going on. But as we found in Turkey, that doesn't always translate to to being exact um and, and yeah the simulators are brilliant but ultimately it's not quite real life yet and and you know the 
We've seen wet races there in the past. Remember that fantastic win for Sebastian Vettel? We had a great uh, one with Schumacher 2006 as well. I think his last win was was there, wasn't it, in, in 06 in the Ferrari? So we, we've seen some some brilliant races there over the years. And um, yeah, I'm looking forward to watching it. Mm. Martin, it does bring back memories of Istanbul, doesn't it? Where, where it was almost farcical with the with the uh, with the with the drivers going off and skidding. But I, I mean, look, that was Lance Stroll got a pole that that week, didn't he? So who knows? And led the race uh, comfortably, yeah. for a good while. Um, yeah, that's about the oils that come out from a new from a new surface, and and they just sat on top in Istanbul and, and got mixed up with some water and and turned into the equivalent of sort of ice, really. And and the, the drivers were lap after lap after lap before they could get any grip it just made for a fascinating Grand Prix but um, I don't know the details of the of the surface in in Shanghai to be honest or exactly how long it's been down but um, there's no doubt about it uh, F1 cars do burn a line a racing line quite quickly in, into a surface as long as they get enough dry laps on it 